Another day, another video. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we are watching 13 Reasons Why. This episode 5 of Season 2. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying the series so far. So, last episode, it was Marcus's episode. And it was his time to take to the stand. Now, he was lying, you know. I didn't really like anything that he said in court. I thought he was lying all the way through it. You know, he said that, um, you know, Hannah shouted at him because he grabbed her hand. Um, and that isn't the case at all, is it? we seen it. He was trying to obviously move his hand up a leg. And we got a bit of a backstory as well, which explained why he was actually doing that he had a bet with Bryce you know I bet him like 100 bucks that he couldn't obviously you know touch her and uh, that's what he tried doing that's why he was looking over his shoulder all cocky and smart and laughing with his friends and uh, obviously we seen the true reason why she pushed him out not the fact that he was holding hands now it's interesting because he dropped Bryce's name into the equation inside the courtroom he was saying that Hannah never actually really liked him and she was kind of using him to get to another boy his friend Bryce very interesting we know that's not true as well we also seen that he was saying that uh, Hannah was the top of his dollar valentine which again was false you know she wasn't um interesting conversation obviously that he had with Courtney in the flashback she was saying that she doesn't get it you know he wants to be this all like popular politician -y type of guy you know like wants to go to Harvard and be head of the school council but then he just acts like a dickhead in other scenarios and just like a standard guy and just wants to go around and kind of like use girls and have all this popularity stuff which I agree you know like Courtney this season has not been bad I enjoyed that conversation what she was saying as well because it was true now again very interesting you know Bryce grabbed him when he come back to school and said why have you just dropped my name into it fuming and then he, he managed you know what Fair play to Marcus, he flipped it really well. He was saying, do you know what? I've done it for your benefit, Bryce. You know, you're going to get in the stand and instead of them asking questions about this and that, they're going to focus in on this. They've got a topic, they can use it, you know, and it's going to deter any questions and any other like scenarios away from you and he's just going to focus on, you know, Hannah having a crush on you. You can obviously use that to your advantage and say, well, she was the one, um, you know, that had a crush on me and when I rejected her, she started to spin it and she'd tell people this and that and spread the lies and none of it ever happened. So when you look at it in that context... He managed to spin it, spin, 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 Marcus, and it kind of worked out. So it's kind of clever. You know, we've seen Tyler. He's getting new friends. You know, he um, pulled a prank on Marcus, actually. You know, he left a duffel bag right outside of his car. And when he went over to look inside of it, paint can popped all over his face. And now they've moved on to shooting guns. You know, not at people, but they was like, oh, what should we do next? And he was like, have you ever shot a gun before? And then he went into the woods and he started shooting cans and bottles. So very interesting to see what's going to happen with Tyler and his new friend. We've also got... Clay, you know, he's ended up giving Alex the tapes at the end of the episode. You know, he's been asking for them. Clay's been humming and hiring whether to give it him and he's decided the best option is for him to have it and make his own mind up of the situations. He's heard them before, he's struggling right now and, you know, he should have them and he should make his own mind up. Now, I do like that. Also, very interestingly, Jessica, you know, and Alex ended up kissing in the last episode and then she started getting emotional because she found out that Justin's back and, you know, Justin's going for like a detox because he's been doing drugs and he's in Clay's room and do you know what I mean and like he's trying to get on a straight and narrow to help her so there's so much going on it's exciting and I can't wait to see what we have in store for us for the rest of the season so thanks for checking out the video today hopefully you guys enjoy it if you do please smash the like really helps out subscribe if you do and as always let's jump into episode 5 of season 2 of 13 Reasons Why <laughs> Nothing that's worth anything comes without pain. A work of art is only good if it arises from necessity, from need. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Claiming the word is our own. Reappropriation. Like saying, we're the assholes, so don't fuck with us. A soul in need needs a way to express it. Silence is never the answer. And it's a dangerous thing when there's so much going on inside you. Oh, his car's no been attacked. With. Do you know what that reminds you of? It's reminding me of A. Honestly, do you know, like a little terror terrorizer going around there. It's kind of like Pretty Little Liars, you know what I mean? He ter like A terrorizes them uh, all of the time, and like all these are getting terrorized. Now, it's interesting because Pretty Little Liars is coming back, a new season, people, whatever. Might bring that to the channel. These morning practices are killing me. I'm passing out at exactly 4.30 today. Or you could come back to my place. My parents want to meet you. They do? Yeah. That's so cool. I should buy a dress. You want to buy Okay, or at least go home and change. I'll need at least an hour, okay? Are you going to ask him about the Polaroid? I don't trust him any more than I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. How can you not trust that little sleeping angel? It's just so fucking cold in here. It's chills. He has a fever. It's chills. You have a fever. Well, get him another blanket. Oh, I'm hungry. How can you be hungry? You threw everything up. That's why. Maybe that's why I'm hungry. <laughs> 
<laughs> I will just be glad when this is all over for you tomorrow and you are as far removed from this mess as possible. Your mom's starting to think you're avoiding us. Uh, avoiding? No, no, no. I've just got. Oh, he's trying to lock on hide the noise. You can't take every meal in your room, kiddo. Yeah, that new tankless heater takes a while to warm up, but it shouldn't take this long. <laughs> no, no, sometimes the valve is on the cold side. It's all good. I have, I have some coffee. What the fuck? Ah, oh, yeah, Dad. Plenty of hot. Water heater's totally working. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what a clay so wet. Sorry. Can you get out now? I look like I'm the one in the shower, you idiot. Good morning. Hi, I'm Andy. Oh, of course, I remember. Will you be joining us today? No, no, he won't. The things that they've been saying in there, things that you'll hear, we have no idea. I'll learn. He's my babysitter. What, what happened to Sherry? Sherry couldn't skip choice in a row. I gotta go. Um, have fun. Don't kill each other. Thanks. But as is almost always the case in high school, we mock what we don't understand. So no one addressed the anonymous author's obvious cry for help or ask you who wrote it? Nope. No one took it seriously. You know, what's interesting there is what you're saying is nobody took it seriously. But, you know, did it, was it not him, the, the person that received it and then he published it? And then when the school actually found out, then they kind of stopped his publishing. Is that not what happened? I might be mistaken, but the woman that's been staying at, um, you know, Hannah's mum's house, I, I was just saying, where's she come from? Like, what is she? You know, like, she's just turned up. And then, uh, as I said it in episode one, like, or two or something, I think I heard that her daughter has killed herself before, which we've seen in, in the show, like, obviously reference with the soccer and stuff. And what she's doing is offering like offering herself as like a person to confide in for someone who's been in like a situation similar to that and like her group and trust or whatever is there fully back in obviously the bakers so again do you know what i mean like unless that has got a further extension of story to play i would say that it's not needed to be in the story like she doesn't need to actually be here unless it's going to play a bigger part down the line do you know what i mean like because andy's back now which i'm happy that he's back you know like he's got to find out what happened to his daughter because i would even if i broke up with the mum i would still want to be here and i would want to get the truth i think you know why you're here yeah i'm aware you want to tell oh, me this about these? The dance. wait that's what this is about i went into the photography classroom and the printed history in the lab said that you were signed in. So do we know who might be doing this to Jessica then? Same person who smashed my camera. Did anyone ever find them? Isn't this like your, your special resources period? Yeah, I hate that shit. I keep listening to mine over and over again because it doesn't make sense. You want to talk about it? Aren't we talking about it? <laughs> what is that machine? Well, like, I guess it's a chalk machine. What What's Clay trying to put to, together there? I have no idea. It seems like nothing until the hurricane hits. Is that why you did it, Alex? Uh -huh. You had no idea that Hannah was crying out for help in her work, or so the prosecution would have us believe. But you expect the school to draw that conclusion? Ryan, isn't it true that you worked with Hannah on many of her other poems? Would you read this poem for the court, please? Sister one night, she said that she felt naked. I thought it was a good poem. Oh, fruit forbidden, so sour, so sweet. I have been banished from the garden, and I don't think I miss it. But you said you had another one you wanted to read. Uh, yeah. Justin Foley? He's your forbidden fruit? No, he's not. Like, but we just text sometimes. Oh, you text. And talk on the phone a little. You just told me to delve deeper. Not into him. You said yourself <laughs> he ruined you. I know. You put your hand on the hot stove. Owie, you've learned your lesson. Hey, that's pretty good, yes. that. I like what he just said yes. there. It was the smile that did it first, the way it seemed so easy for you to be so happy. That smile, I wish I'd never seen. Stop. And who is this poem about, Ryan? I don't know. Oh, he slid. Oh, that's interesting, mate. So, was she sexting with Justin then? <laughs> that's mad, that, isn't it? I would never have put that together, just because of, obviously, season one. Uh, but then it's like, it goes against... When I was like, Justin, proper hardcore, loves Jess. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now he's like, what? He's texting her on the side because he was still with Jess in this point, wasn't he? Which is interesting. He might have been texting his friends. Who knows, mate? But if she's texting him, then again, do you know what I mean? It's interesting. But I'm absolutely loving getting clips from last season. I'm not going to lie. I've said it loads of times, like a parrot. The fact that we go from present day and his hair is like a bit wavy on the front and we go back to last season. He's got a comb over fringe. 
I just think it's really good, like how they've done it. They do it with Hannah's mum. You know, she's got short hair in this one. Go back to last season, clips that we haven't seen, long hair. And I just think it's deep, even with Alex, a commitment to put obviously a wig on him. Oh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's a wig and they've not shot it last season. It's just really good. Like, he was listening to the tapes and we got kind of like a cut of him playing Xbox. Like, what was that referencing? And then it went back to him sat on the bleachers. You know what I mean? I think it's fascinating, me. No one has admitted what they did. It's just me. Yeah, that Ryan's a fucking tool. Worst kind of gay. I didn't mean that because he's gay. <laughs> oh, he's fucking shallow and pretentious and he fucking dresses gay every day. Dad's also gay. Hence he can say shit the rest of us can't. If I win, we get to go outside. No. Come on, just for like a no. walk or something. Holy shit. You are scared. Why? I don't know what's on, man. I, my brothers and I, we beat this guy up. Pressing charges a few weeks later. It was my second strike. Now I'm on probation. What the fuck happened to you? Basically blew through most of my money. Oxy was like taking the edge off. All these pills are so pricey. And my heroin's cheap. Put your fucking shoes on. Can someone explain to me like why why you would get done if you see me Justin? Like what? Why the police have to Justin? Like what? What have we seen Justin do that that was badly against the law? Like I don't, I don't really know. He, he seen Clay, didn't he? And he ran off like and then. Did he run into an alley or something? An old man started shouting and then like the police pulled up at the side. Maybe because he thought like chaos was going on, so to speak, and he just ran and got in Tony's car and drove off. Like, he, he just he was just sat on the street. Like, what has he actually done that's against the law? Unless he was referencing something from last season. You weren't pissed about yesterday? No. Plus, they want me to go to group therapy. You can always talk to me. <laughs> that's what I said. I won't um, try to kiss you every time or anything. <laughs> I listened to the tapes. Clay finally gave them to me. You never told me the whole story about Bryce. If I wanted to talk about that, I'd go to stupid group therapy. I saw one of those chalk machine things in here somewhere. And holy shit, there it is. Hannah wasn't the only one. You gotta find that room. Who's the poem about, Ryan? Justin Foley? After Justin Foley, in her own word, and destroyed her reputation, she maintained contact with him? She maintained personal contact with Justin Foley? I, I don't know. You texted me you were here. Never thinking you would, like, come visit. Yeah, I've, I've actually never been in here. Well, neither have any of your friends, so it's safe. We haven't really talked in a while, so I thought maybe I wanted to see you. Well, you see me at school. Yeah, but you know how that is. Once you get tagged at Liberty, that's what you've got. Why, hello, Justin. Uh, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, we were just we were just finishing up some homework stuff. Okay, I know. Leave me Cleanse alone. Cleanse him, Hannah. Cleanse. Cleanse. <laughs> she wrote about longing, about love, and the lack of love. She wrote about Justin and and other boys because she was lonely. Justin Foley was a bad decision. We all make bad decisions. Well, I don't get this whole secret agent routine. Oh, really? You don't get that there are some people who might not be happy to have you back. He says she wants me here. I don't think it's that Who simple. is that? That's a person that ran Clay off the road. Why does Harlow familiar to you? Go to our school, so you got your wish. Everybody's gonna know you're back. Do you know, that's interesting, that. That is definitely the car that ran Clay off the road, wasn't it? And do you know what, as well, right? I was about to... Oh, mate, I was about to pop off there. I was gonna be fuming, the fact that, like, you know, when Ryan's on the stand and he doesn't want to say something, the... The opposition lawyer could be just like hounding him, blah blah blah, answer, 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 and he has to. Where like when he says something that she doesn't like, she's like, not done. And like I thought that that would have been Ryan. He, he would have had to stop then. But like I, I'm happy that Hannah's mum's lawyer got up and started speaking to him because that would have actually stressed me out, mate, literally. And you know the poems, yeah. I the one that he took and published was was a sick poem. It actually was so good. Like, the one where she stood up and she read it out in front of everybody as well. That was a sick one. Like, I, I liked it. And that if the reason it's published is because it was well good. And even he in that episode said, like, that's amazing. Like, so many other people will be feeling the same things as you. Do you know what I mean? Like, get it out there. It'll help people. That's what he said. That's why I published it. It was, it was next level. Where these ones was kind of just like a diary entry, in my opinion. Oh, I like Justin, you know, it makes you feel good with texting. Yeah, that's not like a poem. The other one was impactful. It was really good. So, but to be fair, out of all of the cases so far, well, first he said, uh, Tyler said, I'm the only one that told the truth. But no, I, I actually think that Courtney told the truth as well, if I'm being honest. But I'm liking how it's going because I think that this case today in episode five, 
swayed on the school side. I, I like regardless of what he said and he's backing it up and that they was trying to say pretty much she's saying Justin's done this, this and this and made her feel small and insecure. She's got no friends. She hated it. Worst thing in her life. And now she's here. She's texting him. Can't be that bad, can it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this episode might have swayed on the school side, which is good, really. Like, you know, because we're having a bit here, a bit there. That was a lot to take. Well, today was a good day. It's nice seeing you two together. Nice for the jury, too, right? That's not what I'm thinking. It's easy to fall into old patterns, to rely on someone who has proven unreliable. Floors don't match. No couch. Damn it. There has to be some athletics room somewhere. He's always been an asshole. His best friend is a rapist. I didn't know that then. Cat warned you. Well, so it's my fault? I'm not saying that. What are you saying then? I don't understand why people love people who aren't good for them. Well, that's some sad shit, that, in it, for her. All set for tomorrow? For court? You want me to come with you? Yeah, that's all right, coach. Thanks. Zach, are you coming? No, I'm good, brother. Don't eat it. Not gonna tell on us, are you? Why, you think I'm a rat? No, of course not. Oh, I wonder if it was him that stuck the rat in his bag. He's jealous of his friendship. I'm probably overthinking it, but not every girl gets to meet the parents, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could wear anything, Chloe, and they'll still love you. We'll find you a man, okay? You just have to let me help you. The last thing I need in my life right now is some fucking guy. <laughs> See, right, I was gonna say, yeah, this... Is it Chloe? I know it's just said her name out four times. Um, I, I was going to say me, like, at first when she was introduced, I was thinking, I don't really like her. The more that I'm listening to her talk, the more I'm just thinking that she's, like, naive and just oblivious to everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, I just feel like she's just a standard girl who, like, don't really know what's going on and don't really take everything that's being said like serious and like you know like when she first had that conversation to uh jessica about obviously like the rape and stuff i was thinking oh, why would you say that but like the more i'm seeing her personality kind of like progress forward the more i'm just like she, she hasn't got a clue do you know what i mean like she didn't realize that she was doing anything so i'm actually interested in her and like why she's been implemented as well as like bryce's girlfriend that's fine but like we're giving her a little story you know kissing in his like little boathouse or whatever being invited to his parents do you know what i mean like constantly talking to jess like proper pushing it it's like she's getting her own little thing going and i'm just like interested to see because like i said i feel like she's dead naive and don't really like get what's happening i needed a friend as much as she did i was friends with hannah and i let her down and i'm sorry can i ask you some questions about hannah's journals yes Course. She mentions the clubhouse in three different poems. I imagine myself for a moment, one of the elite, but I never should have gone to the clubhouse. Uh, what about the intruder? Several times, too. There's a whole poem about him. This is fucking useless, Ryan. We write and write about shit and nothing ever changes. I wish I didn't need people to tell me that I'm good or that they like me, but I do. That's what you should write about. No. <laughs> Enough writing about my emotions. Can we just eat them? Hannah yeah, was so talented. But she didn't know it. So I stole her poem. He stole more than one then, look. I'm sorry I can't be more helpful. Why did she keep in contact with Justin? Loneliness. It can be intense at our age. It's not just at your age. Oh, that was deep, wasn't it? It's not just at your age. What she needed most was love. Ah, oh, what's right? Grinder. Oh, and they've managed to, um, that's that guy, innit? He was in the school with Tyler. I know news travels fast and he's all. Don't care. You don't care that he's back? No. The only address I have of him is his dad in Sacramento. Oh, well. Just I'll <laughs> be honest. Oh, well. You don't have to talk to me. Talk to someone. That's the running theme with Jess, isn't it? Speak to somebody. That's literally it. Like, I thought she was going to use Singy as a therapist, Alex. Justin's never met his dad. His mom lives with some drug dealer named Seth. She's a great girl. Very pretty. <laughs> She's got a brain, too. Her grades are better than mine. She's loyal. Yeah. You seem quite happy, the two of you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's so sweet to me, like, all the time. She's got a bruise on her hat. Oh. Cheerleading. Cheerleading. Full contact sport. I see. One sec before we go into that. My first opinion to Bryce's mum is I like her. I do. Like, if you had a kid and you found out he was abusing people, or he'd raped somebody, or he'd killed somebody, would you tell the police? Now, I would... You could say whatever's, you know, you can have your own opinion. You could call me a snitch or whatever's. But I don't want nobody, regardless of whether it's my kid, to be a hypocrite, to be abusing, raping, killing people, yeah? You do that, 
you deserve the time. You're supposed to be a good human. Just live your life respecting people. Yeah. So his mum so far seems to be a person. I don't know her mannerisms, the way she acts around situations, the way she's looking and like the vibes and getting. Yeah. She seems like a decent one. His dad seems like another Bryce. He's got the same mindset, the same outlook. And, like, it's interesting to see how they're different. And she seems like she's concerned for this girl, which, again, is really interesting. Jessica and I kissed yesterday. Yeah, well, but then she, she freaked out on me. I just, I still think it has something to do with Justin. Yeah, I haven't really felt anything, like, post-coma. Have you tried porn? Yeah, of course I've tried porn, but I thought with a real person, maybe it would, you know. Sorry, Sherry. He, he went to the movies with his dad. Actually, why don't you stay? Wait for him. Can I ask you a question for, for a case that I'm working on? Let's say uh, a boy and a girl uh, have been texting a lot, and then all of a sudden it stops. That's, that's probably just a hookup. I guess I left her even more lonely than she was before. And I guess I know how she feels. Hey, how are you doing? Not great, actually. Caleb, Ryan, Ryan, Caleb. Nice to meet you. Handshake, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to join us? <laughs> yeah, actually, no, I was just leaving. I, I got stood up. Forget him. Stay. I want some dirt on Mr. Perfect here. Uh, for the longest time, nothing was the same. How long I slept, what I ate, what I wore. You know what? The one thing that did seem to help was all of you. She's the one that come and saved her from Mr. Porter at a locker. Figured in case those rumors were bullshit, which they obviously were, that I'd be a friendly face. Slightly stalkerish. <laughs> I don't stalk, I lurk. Oh, okay. <laughs> It worked, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some music. They sound angry. They are. Mr. Barber called today. He said he saw you and your friend Cyrus shooting guns. Does he mean Cyrus's BB gun? A BB gun? Uh, it's it's like this this old thing Cyrus has. It's... And did Cyrus give you that music? And that shirt? Yeah, she's thinking by the influence. Them for the appropriate audience. Come, girls. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's broken. So. Yeah, I'm 6'3". I'm jacked because I, I work out a lot. Fuck! God damn it. I don't work. I'm not 6'3". I'm not jacked. I'm, I'm really skinny and funny looking and my dick's broken. I feel sorry for him to be fair, do you know what I mean? It's a tough one. Mental struggle, that, isn't it? He's I'm definitely going to feel insecure. At least he didn't get discovered. Yeah, um... How about that? She doesn't want me here, does she? It, you lied to me. No, I, it's the truth. Jessica just doesn't realize it yet. She kept it. Justin, Nancy, I'll always love you. Sid, why would she keep that? Do you want to know why Hannah wrote these poems? She was reaching out. She was desperate to be heard. I was thinking maybe I'd try to sleep in here tonight. Hey, she's really? making progress in it, back in her own room. You want me to tuck you in? <laughs> silly. <laughs> they took her own story away from her, and she fought to get it back. I'm looking for your son. Look, what can I tell you? He ran away. I mean, you don't want to know how he's doing, or is he alive? Or... He can take care of himself. I'm the one that Punk stole a thousand dollars from. Going to get me my money back, or what? Well, I, I'm not really here for that. Or <laughs> what? Don't do that. Go on, Kevin. Knock him out. Go on, lad. <laughs> yeah, go on, lad. But I like how he's keeps the going for it. Was so loud that it's all that she could hear. To believe that no one could ever know you or love you. Go on, son, you took and one for the team the there, lad. that knows what you're going through. And you convince yourself it's going to get better. Spiraling out of control. Mm. So that is interesting, isn't it? So we're seeing here now that Justin's left. Now, let's hope that he's not gone somewhere to, like, start taking drugs again and, you know, like, be back homeless, so to speak. Because Clay was kind of giving him a foundation to obviously get better. We've seen that, obviously, we had Sherry coming around and we had, um, you know, we had... Um, Tony as well. Now, obviously, they might not be his best mates, and they might not be the people that he wants to hang around with. But the fact is, yeah, you've got Clay, Tony, and Sherry all trying to help him get back on the on on the right path. Now, it's interesting because obviously he might be fuming that he's found out that Jessica doesn't really want him in that situation. She's not really really happy that he's back, so to speak, and you know. He might be a bit gutted about that, but then he's got to look at the positives that people are actually there for him. And, uh, you know, I don't mind if he's, like, running away and maybe he's going to go and try and speak to Jessica himself. But, like, let's hope that he doesn't go and do drugs because, you know, I feel like he's been doing okay. Now, it's interesting that the person that ran Clay off the road, yeah, they look like they go to Liberty High. That's what... Um, Tony said anyway when he was walking down the street. It was a Range Rover, wasn't it? Now, I wonder if it's Cyrus's car. 
this will be interesting. Do you know that the later the story goes on, the more we might find about him now? Because obviously, Tyler's mum just come in and sat down and speaking to him about wearing those t shirts that say arseholes on it. She said that they was seen shooting guns, which they was by the old man last episode. And obviously, he's like pushed it, deterred that conversation away and said it was a BB gun and it was Cyrus's. And, you know, it's not mine. Um, now, obviously, this episode, yeah, we was at court and it was Ryan being interviewed and it was obviously asking questions about the poems and stuff. And I think that this is one of the one of the only episodes where it could have swayed in the school's favour. You know, they was kind of trying to say, like, situations that if Hannah was so hurt about, um, you know, Justin and everything that he'd done to her and she was so embarrassed and he, he'd done this and that, then why is she still talking to him? Why is she still writing poems about him? Shows that she's got affection. He's tried countering it, saying that, well, yeah, maybe because she's lonely and she needs this and she wants, like, you know, some sort of connection with somebody and attention, um, which is fine. But I do think that the school in this episode kind of had a strong little bit of case, kind of, you know, it could have swayed in their favour. Now, again, interesting that last episode, Clay's mum ended, like, you know, flicking through the files. And then today's episode, she's kind of, like, sat at home and she's kind of doing her own little case study, isn't she? She was asking questions, you know, to Sherry about relationships. You know, if a girl was texting a boy and it was going on and then, like, they stopped, what's that going on? She's like, maybe they was dating. Well, what happens if they weren't dating? Well, maybe it was just a hookup. It was a little thing, you know what I mean? So, again... It's interesting that she's doing her own digging as well. I wonder if she uncovers some information that we haven't heard before or seen before. But like I keep saying, I do enjoy these little flashbacks that we're having about uh, extra clips that we've seen in season one that we haven't seen yet. And obviously, like, storylines progressing. It's really decent. That's going to wrap up today's episode. Thanks so much for checking out the channel today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. So, very interesting. Obviously, the Bakers are here in court and Andy's turning up now. We like to see it. You know, he's showing support for the case. He's missed the first few episodes, obviously. And, uh, you know, like, the first... Uh, kind of round of the court interviews but now he's here now and he said that he's going to come to them all now obviously hannah's mum's followed him after the court and um seen where he's going and he's turned up to his new house and he's living with a new female and it seems like she's got a little kid as well and he was all embracing and obviously she's like kind of sad uh watching that now she's gone home obviously ryan's come around she's been asking him information he started um you know speaking to her about it we got a flashback them two sat in the room hannah and him and he's flicking through the poems and he's he, he tore two out he did he all two out but in his like overlay his commentary and narrative whatever you want to call it he only said that he took one and last season we only seen one published but he had two he 100 percent ripped two out so i want to know what he's done with the second poem to be honest that's really intrigued me now we've uh seen uh jessica she's progressing mate you know she's so far she's been sleeping on the same floor as her parents so I, in the same room I, i'm not too sure but she's not been wanting to stay in her own room but now she's gone and well she was speaking to alex you know he was saying that um he was talking to her about the tapes and stuff and saying if you need somebody to talk to instead of therapy you can speak to me and then he was like back and forth in and then obviously later on she's gone to like i don't know like, i don't know a group meeting where they all sit down and they talk about things and the girl that we're seeing on the race track then the girl that come the same one uh to speak to her when she was speaking to mr porter has obviously um maybe been through some sort of scenarios like she has before and she's in this group and she's expressing how much it's helps her and her feelings and she's glad that she's there and it seems like i don't know jesse's coming out of a shell a bit maybe she gets a new friend you know like she's progressing she's staying back in her own room you know it's good to see um you know what's going on with her i really really obviously want to uh her story to come out later on in the season i want all the facts to come down i like how bryce's mom said it in the episode he's kind of like concerned i feel like she's wary of bryce and like stuff that he's possibly done after the conversation with the teacher she's seen like marks is she called chloe on her arms and then she's trying to put two and two together she said it's cheerleading i knew that would come out of mouth straight away in terms of chloe i feel like she's just like an innocent person who's kind of like naive to the whole situation when she's speaking to jessica about getting a boyfriend about bride she doesn't have put two and two together she doesn't realize the severity of the scenario and like when she's talking about justin and the rape stuff she's just like oblivious to like how impactful and like how bad it is to actually like start saying this stuff and like so i'm gonna give her a bit of leeway like as i see a character progressing our personality coming out i just feel like she's just not like you know like sound enough and she's not really like getting the situations um now i do think it's interesting that um you know tyler 
in the way he is with his friends, new friends, is kind of going. He's going down like a little terrorizing avenue himself. You know, at first they've uh, they've hit Marcus, didn't they, with the paint, and then they've uh, they've gone and they've kind of like set Ryan up to make it look like he's got a date or something. You know, except for like a grinder account, and then he was texting him and then stood him up. And then we have seen them shoot weapons in the woods, and like now he's walking around with like assholes on his t-shirts, and he's obviously like uh, listening to like what does he say punk music and said they're all angry and stuff like his character is really interesting you know like maybe he's the one throwing bricks through um the teacher's window now mr porter you know he went and beat up justin's uh mum's boyfriend uh, he does deserve a good eye didn't him didn't like him last season don't like him here um so I, I don't mind that he's got a good beat him that's really good and then obviously we'll finish off by talking about um playing the information that obviously found on the picture he was looking at it didn't he through the eyeglass and he said that he thinks that the pictures of bryce was taken on the school property now if it is that is going to be a big deal makes it brings the school into play and it's going to be well interesting so he's still on the search for that uh hannah's mum as well was mentioning about about the the boat house or something the the summit house and she said it's come up in like four poems now if that's gonna have some significance hannah knows it obviously because she wrote it why is she not telling clay and she can speak to him again it's gonna be another interesting bit of information when it's revealed so thanks for checking out today's episode hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did please smash the like really helps out subscribe if you're new and as always i'll catch you in the next one cheers guys